In our lab today, we're going to be figuring out the percentage of sodium bicarbonate in a mixture. Um, this is our mixture, and our mixture is a mixture of sodium bicarbonate, which is also baking soda, uh, and sucrose, or powdered sugar. So both substances look very similar. They're both white powders. It's hard to tell how much of each one there is, um, but we're going to do a reaction, take some measurements, and do stoichiometry to figure out what percentage of this mixture is sodium bicarbonate and what percentage is powdered sugar. Um, first of all, we'll take a look at a couple reactions. So if we take acetic acid and we add sodium bicarbonate to it, you can see that it fizzes. It produces carbon dioxide gas. Uh, the carbon dioxide gas is being released as the sodium bicarbonate reacts with the acid. Um, if we weighed this at the beginning and we weighed it again at the end, it would actually weigh less at the end, and that's because of the carbon dioxide that was released. So it's pretty easy to figure out how much carbon dioxide gas was released by measuring the mass before the reaction and then measuring the mass again after the reaction and however much mass was lost, that's carbon dioxide that was released. The other substance we're using today, the other substance in our mixture is powdered sugar. And sucrose, when it reacts with acetic acid, nothing happens. Uh, you can see that it dissolves a little bit in the water, but no reaction takes place, no gases are released, so there won't be any change in mass. So if we start with 10 grams of sugar and acetic acid, we'll still have 10 grams of sugar and acetic acid at the end because no reaction took place. Uh, so for this lab, we're going to take a sample of the mixture and we're going to react it with acetic acid. Uh, the sodium bicarbonate that's in this mixture will be turned into carbon dioxide and the sucrose will not react at all. So by figuring out how much carbon dioxide is released, we can use stoichiometry to figure out how much sodium bicarbonate was in this original sample, and we'll assume that the rest of it was sucrose. Uh, so we'll start by finding the mass of our beaker and acetic acid. So we have a beaker, we have acetic acid in it, and its mass is 139.55. 139.55 for the mass of our acid and our beaker. Uh, we'll find the mass of this empty weighing dish mass of the empty dish, 2.25, about 2.26 for the mass of the empty dish. And now we'll take a sample of the mixture. So this already contains both sucrose uh, and sodium bicarbonate mixed together. Our goal is to find how much of it is sodium bicarbonate. So 7.75 for the mass of the mixture. We'll need to subtract out the mass of the empty weighing dish. So 7.75 for the dish and the uh, mixture. So now we're going to add this slowly. Uh, we don't want to add it too fast because we don't want it to overflow the container. But we'll add it, let it react, add a bit more, let that react. You can see quite a bit of fizzing taking place. And that's releasing carbon dioxide. So the products that are left in this container won't be as heavy as what we started out with. Stir this a little bit, get rid of some of those bubbles, let it finish reacting. Okay, so we know from the law of conservation of matter that the products have to have the same mass as the reactants, but this beaker will weigh less than the sum of our two reactants. And that's because a lot of the product has been released. It's gone out as carbon dioxide into the room. So we'll put this on the balance. And we'll find out that it's 143.47 grams. 143.47 grams is the mass of the beaker and products that are left in the beaker after the reaction. So if we take the difference, we can figure out how much carbon dioxide was released. And then we can use stoichiometry to figure out how much sodium bicarbonate uh, was used, and then we can find what percentage it was because we know the rest of the mixture was just sucrose.